really neat. Okay, these guys are gonna sync up in a second here, and then I can kill them. I did not expect to survive that uh, enemy, because it was totally... I mean, okay, this is the giant hamburger, yes. Come on back. Okay. You, they don't come back. They just shoot on from off screen. Okay. That's fair enough. I think I can take down this hammer. Now that I know this part, and then I just need to avoid the falling buns. Good. Good, good. There's a nice... This is a great boss in terms of the strategy they've designed, because it only has a few strategies, but you have to remember them. Like, if I'm just... If you're just sitting there hiding, he will kill you. Where you gotta move. Now he's easy, but only once you figure out the pattern and figure out what you have to do. And I like that in a boss. I don't like a lot of bosses where you have to hit them hundreds of times. Because, like, you get it. A boss is a micro puzzle in a nice short span of time. It's, a me it's meant to create an instantaneous challenge and a little bit of a feeling of accomplishment when you beat it. It's not supposed to be just a time sink. Or, if, it's, if it is supposed to, but you need to rethink your game design. Because, frankly, it's not that interesting to play a game where they just throw a boss at you that essentially you work it out and then you just hit the button over and over again and do this, repeat the same pattern. Now, I think these bosses are maybe a bit too easy. They could probably up the difficulty a little bit on them. Because once you learn once you learn their pattern, basically the battle's already over at that point. Um, but I think we're going to take a little bit of a pause here, and we'll see if my brother joins me for next week on this uh, Super Spears Brothers Plays Panic Restaurant. That was a random place to stop. Alright, we're coming back to the next stage in Panic Restaurant, doing a little bit of a playthrough. Just because um, I want to, essentially. I really enjoyed this game, and I thought it was a really interesting design. Obviously now I'm in the freezer section of this restaurant. Um, it's called... I can't remember what the level that I'm on is called. It's a part of the meal. Um, and how it connects to, uh, you know, how the name of the level connects with the theme, I'm not certain about it. I haven't really seen that extensively. I haven't really examined it, but... That's kind of annoying. I remember trying to avoid that for the longest time, because you don't... You don't want the plate here. It doesn't... The plate's a cool weapon, but it doesn't work in this section. And it's obviously designed to fuck you over, because it's right in the spot... Shit. It's right in the spot where you're gonna where you're gonna hit it. Like if you've got the if you've got the um, shit. if you've got the um, the thing I'm gonna do. If you've got if you've got the fork at this point, then you're gonna run into that thing. So you have to kind of work out exactly your timing there. And I guess if you lost your fork earlier, it would be fine. Oh shit, that's death. This is kind of an interesting area. Spikes are instant death, and these enemies are not that tough. But if one hits you in the wrong spot, instant death. Which is perhaps cheap, but I think it kind of works. It's kind of neat. It really makes you time out your movements, but it, it does it in a way that makes you think about what you're doing a bit. Because they, they come up so suddenly when they do come up. I like the meat hooks here. The first one seems to be just to demonstrate how they work. It's easy to avoid, it's easy to get by, and then they start throwing in pits and, and those things. And the, the way they move is actually not that hard to to plan out, but it's just alarming. Because of your jump is so floaty and you can kind of choose where you land, it's not really a big deal, but it's very alarming when it just suddenly starts moving like that. I like killing popsicles. I love these enemies. These are great. And it's such an inspired idea to have, like, skiing, skating, uh, ice cream cones. I mean, unlike in a game like, uh, Attack the Noid or whatever it is, uh, you know, where a lot of the enemies don't make any sense and don't mean anything, in this game, pretty much all the enemies really have a direct referent, a direct reference point, uh, in what a real world restaurant would be. So the, the whole theme of the game is just, like, completely comprehensive from beginning to end. You're a, you're a chef. Your items and and, and, and weapons are all chef-based. Um, everything you run into in some way refers to something that a chef would do or would happen in a restaurant. You guys thought I would miss the secret area. I'm not. I'm not going to miss it. Catch the fish. It's all catching. Grab the, get the, I don't know. Again, real hands-on chef. Get it? Hands-on. <laughs> 
hand based humor there. Give me a hand, everybody. Okay. I don't wanna. I don't wanna get all the fish. Just for my own pride. I don't even know if points really matter. What is this? Whose line is it anyway? <laughs> Reference whose line is it anyway? Oh, yeah. I did it. I kind of wish I'd missed. I'd grabbed one of the blackfish there. You see what happens? Because it's kind of funny, but. I'm also glad that I got lots of points, which I'll then post to Nintendo Power. Okay, this part took me a while to figure out the first time I played it, because the platforms fall, but not all the platforms fall. And when you look at it again, you can see it's actually kind of obvious what happens here, but it took me a while to get this at first, that some of the platforms fall and some of them don't. Because I was just trying to jump through it and just go really fast, under the assumption that if I moved fast enough, I wouldn't fall, but not how the game works. It actually takes a little bit of thought. Is it, I like games that take a little thought, and I like that this game doesn't take so much thought that you're still in there. We're gonna bubbles. 